If you are looking for a likable workhorse that is practical, reliable and cheap, both to buy and run, then the 2017 Hyundai F30 should be on your shopping list. On its march to become the largest Asian car company, the Korean firm has been working hard to improve its brand image. The i30 is a clear statement that it's more than capable of keeping up with the Joneses in a sector of the market dominated by some of the UK's best-selling models such as the Volkswagen Golf, Ford Focus and Vauxhall Astra. But there are plenty more rivals to mention, such as a similarly styled Peugeot 308, sister brand Gears Seed, the Skoda Octavia, the Brit-built Honda Civic and Renault Stylish Megane. Cabin quality has leapt forward, while it's certainly not a premium proposition in the same way the Audi A3, BMW 1 Series and Mercedes-Benz A-Class are, we're impressed by the quality of the latest i30. The cabin is nicely finished, with a new floating central touchscreen and simple design to the dashboard that makes it very easy to get used to and operate on the move. It's also incredibly quiet. While a choice of three engines means there's something there to sate the financial needs of private and company car drivers in equal measure. Automatic and manual gearboxes are on offer, and while the handling isn't as engaging as the Astra's or the Focus's, it's not far behind and feels safe and confidence inspiring on the road, much like the VW Golf. Lots of safety kit and practical cabin. That assuredness is accentuated by the introduction of a raft of driver assistance and safety systems, with lane departure warning, traffic sign recognition and autonomous emergency braking available. These combine to bring the i30 into line with the top players in the field, while in typical Hyundai fashion the trim levels feature lots of kit as standard, which means there aren't many optional extras to choose from. It's a practical car too. While it's unable to match the Octavia's capaciousness, it's more than adequate with enough space for four adults and a generous and flexible boot. 5A Warranty The i30 also comes with Hyundai's 5A Unlimited Millage Warranty and the firm's reputation for building incredibly reliable cars. So what's not to like? For the majority of car buyers, not a huge amount. It isn't the last word and exciting driving in the rear seats don't fold flat but in the main we can see great appeal here. Hot Hyundai i30N While the regular i30 can be criticized for being a bit vanilla, the same can't quite be said for the i30N, the brand's first proper hot hatch, producing up to 280 horsepower from its 2.0-litre turbocharged petrol engine when fitted with a performance pack. There will also be a 250 horsepower regular model forming a choice that's similar to that of the VW Golf GTI. It's taking the fight to a raft of incredibly capable, engaging and exciting hot hatchbacks, with the help of the man who used to be Vice President of Engineering at BMW's M division. Hyundai's not messing around. So far we've only driven a pre-production prototype, but early signs are very positive indeed with an involving driving experience that feels more than a match for some of the best in class. You've got a choice of three engines on the 2017 Hyundai i30, two petrols and one diesel, along with a pair of gearboxes, a six-speed manual and a twin-clutch DCT automatic. There's also the i30N hot hatch arriving later in 2017, powered by a turbocharged 2.0-litre petrol turbocharged TGDI petrol engines, we were particularly impressed with both petrol engines, badged TGDI. The smaller 1.0 litre three-cylinder is our choice, pulling with surprising vivacity considering its diminutive size. It's rated at having 120 horsepower and 171 newton meters of torque, which means 062 miles per hour in 11.1 seconds and a 118 miles per hour top speed but thanks to a clever turbocharging system it's responsive and quite fun at low speeds. At 70 mph on a hilly motorway you have to drop a gear to accelerate, but if you're doing a lot of motorway mileage then the diesel would be better suited to your driving style anyway. Next up is an all-new 1.4-litre turbo engine, which replaces the old 1.6-litre petrol in the previous i30 range. This is a very impressive motor indeed feeling faster and more exciting than its 140 HP 242 NM performance figures suggest. Officially, 
It'll cover row 62 miles per hour in 8.9 seconds with a top speed of 130 miles per hour. It doesn't sound particularly good, but it's so quiet on a cruise that you won't mind this. Could be diesel power. Your sole diesel option is a 1.6 litre with 110 HP 280 Nm, which is claimed to achieve 062 miles per hour in 11 seconds or 11.2 with a DCT automatic gearbox with a top speed of 118 miles per hour. Like the patrols it's smooth and punchy and is ideally suited to motorway driving as you'd expect. There's less fun to be had on a country lane because of the way the torque is delivered low down the rev range but it still has the same slick manual gear shift, although it does feel heavier than the agile petrol models. It seems the petrol engines suit the i30's more grown-up character better. Gearbox Evaluation The manual gearbox works perfectly well without being remarkable. The shift action was assured and smooth, if a little light for some, and we didn't find it hard to move up and down the gears as required. We found the twin clutch DCT automatic to be perfectly serviceable too, though at times a touch frustrating when pulling away from a standstill in a hurry. It would occasionally take a fraction of a second longer than required to transfer the engine's performance to the wheels. With a little forward planning, you can drive to accommodate this issue, however that's not really the point of an automatic gearbox. Hot hatch, the high end i30N. Sitting at the pinnacle of the i30 range is the i30N, the brand's first real attempt at the hot hatch market. As yet, we've only driven pre-production prototype models, however early signs are very positive indeed, especially when it comes to performance. There's a 2.0-litre turbocharged petrol engine under the bonnet producing 250 horsepower in normal guise, and 280 horsepower with the performance pack fitted which also features upgraded brakes, adaptive dampers and just four tires. We don't have any exact figures, but on a drive we found it responsive and very quick, feeling more than a match for the class best.